the Free Hill Life Podcast, episode number 163. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Hill Life Shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And the turns are getting tasty, my friends. The snow's good. I've been out a couple times, and uh, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. Turns are always good, right? Especially when it's powder. So, hope everyone's enjoying uh, what's going on out there, wherever you're at, making... uh, some tasty turns yourself, hopefully enjoying some uh, new gear maybe you got for the Christmas season, or uh, maybe you just treated yourself, which is uh, always a good thing. So on that note of gear, uh, the latest here at the retail shop is all of, we, all we did was talk about how the boots weren't here, and now the boot, and then the boots were here. And now we're out of a lot of the boots. So today, when you hear this podcast, we should be getting an update about additional boots that we can receive and get onto your feet. Some fine Italian footwear from Scarpa. And uh, we should have that. So we've kind of got a new running list for some of the folks that did not get on it quick enough of many of the key sizes. And... uh, like we've been recommending, if you need something, get on the radar, customer service at freehealthlife.com, and uh, we're hammering through it every day, staying in touch with people, letting them know as soon as we know what's going on, uh, what's available. So that's super important to us, and we want to make sure, since it's uh, a good time in the season to have your gear working right, we want to make sure you can get new boots if you need them. We also have received our back order shipment of 22 designs bindings and uh, those were the ones that we were supposed to get in November now we've got them so when you hear this if you need bindings please check out the website freeheallife.com go to the binding section and make sure to get your 22 designs bindings we're fully stocked up on in wild majo and uh, volet binding so whatever your needs are to keep your feet fastened to your telemark skis we should have it but get it while you can so that's super important to us and and stay on the move with that if you get on the website maybe you're seeing something that you maybe is out of stock or you're not sure like i said you can hit up our customer service at freehealthlife.com email or on all products, there is a notify me button and that puts you in a queue to be contacted immediately once something is restocked or other, otherwise it would kind of give us uh, the information we need to know what needs to get reordered, uh, what's in demand maybe that we didn't see or maybe we can reach out to you and let you know some more information about when that product's uh, coming back online. So be sure to check that out. We always appreciate all the support at freehealthlife.com and that helps us keep moving. So thank you very much. In other news, I mentioned it last week, World Telemark Day 2023 is going to be on Saturday, March 4th. And uh, we'll be talking about that from here forward. I've got a nice little logo that I'm putting the fine, uh, finishing touches on, and we're going to be releasing that probably even at the end of this week. So stay tuned to our social media, uh, get on our mailing list as always, and you can check it out. Uh, I mentioned it last week, World Telemark Day is all about getting together with your friends, rolling solo, putting a little gathering spot together, and uh, we'll probably put a little podcast together to kind of... Uh, get you ready for that and how you can participate worldwide wherever you are as long as you got some telemark skis on your feet and some good friends at your side and uh, even if they're alpine skiers or snowboarders they can celebrate the greatest turn on snow with you saturday march 4th so mark your calendars the countdown begins to the finest day and the biggest celebration of all time world telemark day So today, what are we going to talk about? I was having a conversation with a Freehill Life customer and 
we were talking about this particular subject and it got me thinking about how many times we have this conversation on the daily with people from all over the globe and how important it is uh, to understand all this stuff. And what I'm talking about is basically the transition to NTN, which is typically how people refer to it. I guess that's probably how we refer to it. I don't know. But it's sort of this moment in time that many people are experiencing where they've been on a certain gear setup and they're not quite sure uh, what to do. So a little context with this particular customer is he, uh, he had his skis set up with 22 designs uh, axles, which is their free pivot touring 75 millimeter binding. And uh, I think uh, I'm trying to think which boot I'm blanking a little bit, probably like a T1 or uh, something along those lines. And so he messaged us and was basically like, Hey, I'm taking out my new set of protectors. I've got my outlaw X. I've got my TX pro. What do I need to know? And I realized, I don't think I've really done a podcast specifically for this sort of transition period. And, uh, you know, some of these elements definitely that I'm going to talk about could be utilized across all new equipment because there's always some sort of probably a small transition as you get to know something new. Uh, but I, I wanted to kind of encapsulate everything into a couple steps. And so today we're going to talk about the five key steps to transitioning to NTN or the new telemark norm. For those of you that aren't familiar with NTN, that's what it stands for, for new telemark norm. And it's referring to primarily the, the boot and the binding interface and how it looks and feels and what it does. So NTN boots do not use the 75 millimeter Nordic norm toe or the duck bill as it is often referred to. And it incorporates what's called the second heel underneath the foot or the slang term is duck butt. So before I go any further, I want to mention NTN is not maybe the right call for everyone. Okay. And I was reminded of this with another customer I was talking to, and I just wanted to sort of throw this in before we get into this list, this, this five things, because oftentimes, uh, people think that maybe, uh, retailers like us, and I, I'll, I, I will only speak for us cause I don't know how anybody else does this. And, uh, we're always trying to be the best ones out there at how we get people through. But I wanted to give you a good example of someone who, after I spoke with him personally, uh, I didn't really feel like that was the right fit. And I want to give this example just before we get into this, because the key is to make people stoked. <laughs> so the idea that God forbid you walk into a retail shop anywhere with any type of gear of any type of sport and someone just tries to sell you the new thing because it's the new thing, uh, that just doesn't jive with how we do it here. It doesn't work, you know, because you might not be able to, to get the, the best experience. So this particular second gentleman I was talking to, I'm going to give you the quick, quick and dirty on this one calls up. He says, I've been telemarketing for 30 years. I am 6'5", 220 pounds, and I have been skiing on uh, 200 plus centimeter straight skis. His boots were a pair of Alico leather boots with, I'm assuming, two buckles because that's kind of checks out with what we were talking about. So if you're not from a Alico, maybe like a, 
uh, a Solo Extreme Plus. So a reinforced leather boot with a couple buckles, but low cuff, not like a Merrill Super Comp or something like that. And his binding was a front throw cable binding from Black Diamond, which is literally late 80s, early 90s. So immediately when he told, there's a couple things and and we'll kind of hit on this, but right off the bat, I just was like, you know, what the, what the equipment currently he has and also, uh, height, weight, ability level, uh, the jump was going to be probably too big where if I, if I had just said, yeah, no problem. Like, uh, we've got NTN, uh, we've got TX pro, we got an outlaw. Let's get it out the door. You know, I almost can a hundred percent guarantee that this gentleman would not have been stoked. It just would have been too much of a, of a jump in history of equipment and feel. And, uh, it just wasn't the right fit. And so I actually prepared uh, a 75 millimeter setup that I think he's going to be very pleased with. Um, but like I said, any new gear is going to require a little transition, but, uh, that's something we can kind of walk through them. So those are kind of two contrasting, uh, folks that I talked to recently within the last week that I thought would be cool to share here and sort of a good segue into, uh, these five key steps to transitioning to NTN, if that's the right fit for you. All right, so let's hop into this whole thing. Uh, five key steps to transitioning to NTN. So, kind of alluded to this with the first customer, but what what you need to do if maybe you're on the fence uh, about making a new purchase and you're just weary because you're so tired of going down the rabbit holes on all the internet chatter about NTN and you're just confused and you don't know what to do. The very, very first thing you can do, and this is how we walk walk people through this at Free Heal Life, is our very, very first question is to help you identify your current 75 millimeter setup, okay? Okay. And this, this is the starting point. We need to find the point of origin of essentially your gear and what your gear does and how it works. So it's important, especially if you're going to talk to us, uh, have, have, a, have a little bit of knowledge. We don't expect you to know every little detail of your binding, your boot. Most of the time... Uh, when we're talking to people at the at the retail store, you know, and they're in this situation, we'll say, oh, what binding you on? A lot of times, maybe like seven out of 10 times, people are like, oh, I've got the red one. I've got the blue one. I've got the green one <laughs> in terms of their bindings. And then you start talking about uh, boots and it's kind of a similar thing. So this is what we need to figure out. And this is sort of the recipe to help us uh, achieve what we're going to do. Because a lot of times people are ready to move to NTN or their boots are totally clapped out and they're ready to get a new boot. And for many, many people out there, NTN makes sense from a financial perspective because they're about to drop $750 or so on a pair of boots. And we want to make sure that their hard-earned money is a good investment that's going to last them a long time. And if they're ready to make that transition to NTN and it's a good fit, that's kind of where some of these questions come in to play. And uh, so number one within identify your current 75 millimeter setup is boots. What boot are you on? Okay. So what we want to know is not only the model of the boot, but what that tells us is sort of the flex of the boot. So let's say someone that got into Telemark in the early to mid 2000s, Many people were on a uh, Scarpa T2, for instance. At that in that era, it was a two buckle boot, a little bit lower cuff, and uh, pretty soft flex. And with certain pairings of bindings, it worked really well. So, uh, you know, you might be thinking, oh, you know, what boot am I on right now? Well, you could be on a T2, 
Maybe you're on a Bumblebee T1, which is what we call the black and yellow Scarpa T1, um, which was a three buckle boot, a little bit higher cuff, a little more aggressive. Uh, there was Scarpa T race, generally the red boot. Uh, although some people will be like, I think I have the red boot and your, you know, first inclination is like, Oh, you've got a Scarpa, uh, T race. Well, there, there's a Scarpa T two X for instance, that existed. That was a little bit of a modification on the T two. Uh, so, you know, you can't just go off red for instance, cause in that particular case, you've got an extremely stiff four buckle boot and you've got a mid stiff three buckle boot, very different boots. So, um, identifying which boot you have is incredibly important. And that way we can kind of know one, when you, when you got that boot, kind of what era it was in. And then number two component of knowing your 75 millimeter setup is your bindings. Okay. So, you know, going back to that T2 example, early to mid two thousands, many, many people will say, I have a T2, I think, boot, it's two buckles and I've got a red binding. And oftentimes it is the classic setup from that era. It's a G3 Targa cable binding with a T2, uh, two buckle boot. So, uh, what might happen in there though, knowing the binding, that's really going to kind of help in this recipe for success because in the same era of like a G3 Targa, for instance, which is a cable binding that is very neutral in feel. It has a couple different spring options, but overall it's a very neutral feel in terms of the pivot point of the binding, which we've discussed on the podcast before. Uh, If you're not familiar with that, you can go to you go to our YouTube channel. There's a great video called activity versus stiffness check that one out. That might be helpful to understand a little bit about what I'm talking about for context. But in what we're trying to identify with the binding is, are you coming from a a G3 Targa, a very neutral binding? Are you coming from a, a 22 designs hammerhead, which has an adjustable pivot point in a couple spring configurations? Uh, maybe along the line, you upgraded to a volet switchback or a hard wire or something that is a cable binding, but it's a little more uh, of, of, like I said, a hard wire rather than a flimsy cable. That's important to know. And many people are, have even transitioned into the 22 designs axle or vice three pivot positions, multiple spring options, and is probably uh, and I, I always say this, but it's really the pinnacle in my opinion, like the axle is sort of like the pinnacle of 75 millimeter design. Uh, not that it doesn't compare to other bindings, but I just, it, it just, it sort of has all the features that you could imagine in a 75 binding and is super durable. Um, you might have a black diamond binding like an O one and O two and O three. So those are the first key points of knowing your equipment. What boots do you have and what bindings do you have? And that sort of tells you what era we're in, okay? So what what era of Telemark are we in and what boot and binding combo do you have? And that sort of will give us the first piece of the puzzle because we can kind of identify sort of a feel that is going on, like a a certain boot combination with a certain binding combination, we can very much figure out sort of what it may feel like to you to make a telemark turn. And that's crucial from our end of trying to sell you a new product is we need to know where you're starting from. And it really, really, really plays in to where we're going with this. Is sort of how can how can we as a retailer make a correct prescription for an NTN boot and binding combo that is sort of going to fit where you're at currently and not put you in a in a disadvantaged position with a lot of dilemmas that you don't know how to fix. So 
Very, very important. No boots, bindings, and the error of the equipment. That kind of gives us our starting point. From there, with this, with with your seventy-five millimeter setup, we want to know, you know, how much are you touring? Is it all in bounds? Uh, in bounds skiing? You're not. You don't need a, a, a tour mode, for instance. It's not unlikely that people sometimes are still touring on a non-pivot binding, for instance. They might be touring on a G3 Targa, never went to the Targa Ascent binding that has free pivot. Um, so we want to we want to know that. Where are you currently using the binding? Because we, we also want to keep that in mind as we start helping in this gear transition. And, uh, and then I also mentioned the pivot point thing, very, very important. Uh, basically, where where is the binding pivoting on the ball of the foot? Because that's going to tell us a lot too. So for instance, if uh, I had a customer I was talking to the other day, I've known him since we opened the shop and very similar situation to what I'm discussing. He, he, he says, Hey, Josh, like I, I think I probably need to go to NTN. I, I've got all these skis mounted up with uh, 22 designs axle bindings, but my boots are just toast. I need to get new boots and I know this is a good time to transition, but I don't want to remount all my skis. And you know, there's other dilemmas that are going with this decision. And when I asked him about pivot point, because I know the axle has an adjustable pivot point, I said, what, what pivot position is your slick pin on, which is the little pin that moves into position one, two, or three and influences the activation of the ball of your foot onto the toe of the binding. And he says, I'm on position one, which is the most neutral position on that particular binding. Right off the bat, I know that even though he's on literally the most, one of the most modern, if not the most modern 75 millimeter binding, he's skiing in a very, very neutral position. And what that tells me as someone who's helping him is that he likes the feel of that neutral feel on a telemark binding. And he was able to achieve that through the pivot position on the toe, which is fantastic. And anybody who has ever listened to any of the podcasts talking about bindings, I think that's a feature of any binding moving forward. It would be great to see that incorporated into the design because it allows us to uh, walk a customer, a user of the binding into something that works for them and, and you have the availability to change it up a little bit. So quick recap, identify your 75 millimeter setup, boots, bindings, error of equipment, your need for touring or inbounds or a combination and know your pivot point and I'll just add in the spring option is, is what springs are you on? If you know, maybe you're on a black diamond Oh one and you're on a rid stiff cartridge that tells me something too. Very, very important to have that little cauldron that we're sort of stirring up with all these things to understand where you're currently at. So moving on to the second key step to transition into NTN is now I need to, you as the user and me as the person helping you to identify and understand your style of telemark skiing through all the stuff we just went through. I'm able to probably figure out what kind of style from the questions that I just proposed, you know, that little list we just went, that little miniature list within the list that I went through, I'm probably going to be able to figure out what your style looks like on the mountain. Not always, but things like neutral feel like that one customer I'm talking about, I'm able to start identifying maybe what you look like when you turn and probably what you're feeling. So I've broken this down, these styles into three main ones. The number one style is what we call the low smoker. You like to get low. And this is very era specific and is not a bad thing, but it's definitely 
a lot of times back in the day, especially like, you know, we're talking nineties, early two thousands with these more neutral bindings, there was a, there was a use almost in the technique to get really low if you needed to. Um, stylistically, some people just like the feel of being a low smoker. It's kind of cool. You're close to the ground. You know, it's, uh, I mean, there's an array of reasons why people are, have this low smoker style as we, as we like to call it. And, uh, that low smoker is generally speaking, using a binding that is very neutral in terms of your ability to um, get lower to the ski when you're dropping the knee on the inside leg. Okay. And it's, uh, I'm not, I'm not even going to get into the technique sort of detail of this because there's probably all sorts of arguments about over, uh, overdoing it and what kind of control that gives you on the inside leg, not the podcast that we're in right now. But now I know your style. You're a low smoker. Okay, cool. All right. Now I've got your, your air of gear, what you're using, and you like that style. Second person, I call it modern stand-up. So generally a little more modern technique. Uh, if you had to take all of Telemark and sort of split it up into these ca- categories and, uh, the modern stand-up is probably a little more common these days, especially with modern gear. You're not really getting super low just to get low. Uh, you are, um, you're in a good telemark position. Your back leg is at like a perfect 90 degrees when you drop the knee. It's not going past 90 and it's not less than 90 So if you imagine your leg on the inside leg, you know, if you went basically a boot length between the heel of your front foot and the toe of your back foot, and you drop into a drop knee stance, this modern stand-up style is highly likely you're pretty upright, straight up and down in your torso, and your back leg is at a 90 degree angle, and your front leg, your knee is over your front toe. If you follow all that modern stand up, that's your number two. And then I'm going to throw this in. I don't think it's blasphemy. Maybe you do. I don't know, but they exist. And it's important for us to know is your style is I only make P turns. P turns are also known as parallel turns or as I like to call them the Christiana turn. And you'll have to dig through some podcasts and know why I like to call it that. But there are people out there that actually ski on Telemark gear because they like the Telemark binding. They like the boot. They like the comfortability of it. They like the idea that their heel's not locked down. And they make parallel turns. The majority, if not all of the time. So that's good to know too. So be sure that That's your number two step is identify and understand your style of telemark skiing. There is no right or wrong, but we've got to know step one and we got to know step two to to move into step three. So step three, (laughs) here we go. Now we're going to get into the specifics. We're going to start with making a choice in the gear that fits criteria one and two. We got to have one and two in order to get to three. Okay. So boots are going to be kind of easier. I'm not going to say super easy, but the good and bad part of Telemark boot selection at this point in 2022 is there are not a lot of boots to choose from. Okay. We as a retail shop primarily deal in Scarpa. Uh, it, it fits it's in our opinion, it's the best product out there point blank. Okay. It fits most people's feet. There is a selection enough to get us through criteria one and two and get it done to help people have a great time on the hill. So when we're talking 
moving into an NTN boot, the current selection that is available, like made today, we have the most popular boot, which is the Scarpa TX Pro. We have a women's TX Pro that has a little more modified um, cuff and liner just to uh, fit the anatomy of a woman's calf a little bit better. Uh, and that that's other, other than that, it's pretty much the same boot. And then the Scarpa TX Comp, which is the stiffest boot, okay? The main difference other than stiffness between the TX Pro and the TX Comp is the TX Comp is stiffer and does not have the tech toe inserts in the toe of the boot, which would allow you to get into tech toe NTN. So that's kind of your boot selection. Um, obviously there's some Scott boots. There's some crispy boots out there. We primarily deal with Scarpa. That's what we're great at. And, uh, that's why we're the number one retailer for Scarpa Telemark boots in the world. And, uh, it works great. So that's kind of your boot selection. <laughs> How's that for a simple decision? The majority of people, and I would say anyone going back to criteria number one, the majority of people, if they're in a T1 of any era or they're in a T race uh, or they're coming from a Garmont synergy or energy, and uh, those, I mean, literally those are the most common in, in the U.S. is coming from Garmont or Scott now and Scarpa. Those are primarily what we see. There's very, very, very few people that are going to be in crispy 75 millimeter. They, they do exist. It's just not that common. So I'm not going to really go into that. I'm not as familiar with the 75 millimeter boots in the crispy lineup. But yeah, TX Pro, the majority of people are going to land there. That's the number one selling boot because it has the tech toe in it and it's sort of the T1 flex, okay? So making that boot selection is pretty easy for most people. That's where they're going to land. TX comps, uh, if you don't need a tech toe NTM binding, which we're going to talk about, TX Pro or TX Comp is a great selection for aggressive skiers, people that like a stiff boot, uh, guys that are a little heavier and want a little more beef in the boot. That's a good choice. TX Comp, a little more like a T race, and uh, you're just going to be a little more limited on the binding selection. Making a choice of gear in, in regards to the binding, now we're kind of getting into taking criteria one and two, and I'm going to just briefly go through each of these and sort of explain them. The number one binding that we sell, along with that TX Pro, is the 22 Designs Outlaw X, by far, okay? A couple reasons why. People coming from Axel and Vice, they love to go to it because it's similar. And if they are on that certain slick pin of like two or position three with the slick pin on a 75 millimeter 22 designs binding, this is a great fit. It's an easy transition into it. It has a normal toe cage, meaning it's not tech toe and for resort skiers, even though there is a tour mode on that binding, it is an easy step in. It has brakes available if you want to buy brakes to go with it. You can run it with a leash. And it's just an easy, simple, durable binding that you can use. It also has a stiff, stiffy spring option that you can purchase separately and add on to the binding. So Outlaw X has five different uh, spring preload positions, one through five, that you can alter the stiffness of the preload in the binding. And that comes into play with criteria one and two again. And we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. But 
there's options to change the preload on the spring. That is the most popular binding for us as a retailer and has been for multiple years now. Uh, as far as I'm going to stay with sort of the cage toe binding at this point, just to kind of keep with a theme here. Rotofella free ride is an option for uh, some people too. It is a cage toe with brakes, easy to get into. It's not fully step in, in the sense that you have to, it has a front throw that activates the second heel connection, but the flex of it is different than you would feel on an Outlaw X. Outlaw X has kind of a rigid, uh, I don't know if rigid is the right word, but it's a set pivot point and it, it pivots at that point. Free rides actually have a cable under routing that connects to the springs and there's different spring options and it has a little bit different feel. The way I always like to put it, the free ride is sort of the Ferrari of 2008. And the Outlaw X is sort of the modern Ferrari of 2022. Similar in performance, a little bit more modernized features on the Outlaw X, kind of a similar, uh, maybe not in weight exactly, but it's just, it's like Outlaw X is sort of an updated uh, Cadillac, Ferrari, whatever. I'm not a car guy, but you get the point. Freedom which is the Rotofella offering that they made specifically to make it kind of a more touring model, also has a uh, kind of a little more upright position in the way that the binding feels uh, just to the positioning of the heel pad. It's got double climbing wires, uh, similar to what you'd see on Outlaw X. Sometimes I think that it's sort of a sleeper in terms of options of what you can go to with NTN uh, and has some qualities to it that kind of fit some of the gaps. And that's what we're looking for is options with the binding. The boot selection's not so wide, right? But with the bindings, we want to look at those things that are going to help match up to your 75 millimeter setup. So, both free ride and freedom have tour modes as well. Uh, pretty much everything does on the NTN platform at this point. There is no resort specific, although I hear murmurings of it. I have not seen one yet in production, but that could be a possibility in the future. So moving into tech toe NTN. And when we say tech toe, we're talking about the two pin, uh, tech toe that many people associate with Alpine touring we have that in Telemark now, and we call it NTN, New Telemark Norm, uh, NTN Tech Toe, essentially, or Tech Binding. So Lynx, which is an offering from uh, 22 Designs, that's their Tech Toe. It uses sort of a fiberglass plate underneath. They've just come out this year with a softer plate, and that's great because also, what we're trying to do is match the feel of someone's boot and binding, and having that softer plate helps us achieve that easier. It's an option, and that's what we're that's what we're hoping for as retailers and users of the product as well. Is what are the what are the options? What are the variables we can change to take that initial cauldron that we mixed up of all the stuff and try to achieve it in NTN. That takes us into Majo. Majo's a unique binding from In Wild, a company in France. It is full step in, great tech toe touring. Uh, it has if it has five settings on each spring setting. Um, they have chosen to use an inner spring and an outer spring. S they also have a stiff red line spring that you can use. In short, the Majo has. 20 combinations of spring preload that you can achieve by adding and taking away certain springs and then adjusting the preload on five settings on each. So that's how we get 20 out of that. 
Big part about Majo that a lot of people like, the releasability factor. It's probably the closest to DIN, uh, which is the Alpine measurement of releasability. It's probably the closest to that, uh, if not the only one on the market that has something like that. Very cool feature. Many people that are worried about their knees are willing to go tech toe even as a resort skier and they end up going with Majo because of that releasability. Majo also has proven to be a NTN option for uh, people that kind of want what we would call a kind of 75 millimeter flex. And uh, that's an option too. And something that we've heard over and over again from people, they feel like the flex is more natural, quote unquote, uh, and consistent to their 75 millimeter flex. So take that for what it is. You probably want to try it out yourself. Uh, You can uh, demo some of our stuff if you're curious about it. And then finally, TTS, which is Telemark Tech System. It's not really NTN but it utilizes an NTN boot, but has a cable around the back. Not going to go too deep in there, but thought worth mentioning. Okay. So we made it through step one, identify your current 75 millimeter setup. Step two, identify and understand your style of telemark skiing. Three, make a choice in the gear that fits criteria one and two. And now we are on to number four, day one on your new setup. What the hell do I do? (laughs) That's usually where people are, uh, they're not sure where to go, what to do. So here's what I'm going to say. This is, I'm going to give you sort of my step-by-step what I think people should do. And kind of how to approach this. I'm going to approach this section as if you just bought a brand new setup, like skis, boots, and bindings because this happens a lot. You're like, I'm geared up. I'm ready to go. I'm buying my new boots. I got my new, I don't know who talks like this, but (laughs) I got my new boots. I got my bindings. I'm set to jet. I got my new skis. And this is like my very first one. I talked about that protector customer. That was what was happening. All three things are new. So this is my step-by-step. And this is literally what I told him. I said, Number one thing to do is I want you to go to the top of the lift and I want you to make as many parallel turns as you can to get to know the ski, the shape of the ski, the feel of the ski, the flex of the ski. What the hell does the ski do? And a good way to start off with that is make some nice P turns, some nice Christiana turns, get to know how that ski is working. Okay. And at least take like an entire lap, just ripping groomers on these P turns, on these parallel turns. Maybe you want to get into some bumps, some crud, but just keep your feet together. I know, I know that sounds like blasphemy when you're on a telemark setup, but just do it. I I promise. Get to know the ski so that we can kind of sort of build a relationship with the ski prior to moving into the next thing. Once you feel like you kind of understand what the ski is doing and you understand the flex and you understand the turn radius and you, you know, you just, you have a general feel of what's going on with that ski. Then I want you to start your telemark turns. And specifically, I want you to just start telemarking as if you were on your old gear with your old style criteria one and two. Okay. And see what happens. Okay. I want you to see what happens and I want you to feel if you can do what you thought you could do. All of that telemark knowledge that you've put into your brain and into your muscles over the course of 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. I want you to try it and then feel if feel how close it is. Some people will absolutely be pretty close, if not right on with where they came from. But it really, a lot of it depends on that. Those first two criteria that we went over is, and then going into criteria three is making the gear selection on the NTM platform 
that vibes with one and two, and now you're out on the slope trying it. And so what you don't want to do is go into step four and you're like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to. I heard this is going to be different. So I'm going to, you know, you're so convinced it's going to change your style that you just let it change your style. (laughs) I want you to actually try to do what you think you can do. And then what we're going to do is make some adjustments from there. So if it feels off at all, like you're just, "Ah, I don't get what's going on. I want you to start to identify what things are limiting your movement and feeling and what's what what are the factors specifically that are changing so that you can kind of identify you know is it just new gear am i just having a hard time with a brand new boot that's like out of the box not really broken in is the binding doing am i feeling like the binding's not neutral enough um and does the spring tension feel like too much? These are the things that you need to identify. And frankly, this might not be like a single day thing, you know, like you kind of need to understand it. One thing I want to point out that's very different for people from nearly every 75 millimeter binding moving to NTN that is going to get you in a good or a bad way. Ultimately, I think it's good personally, but it's probably going to get you. And it might be part of what you're feeling. And that is lateral stability. So NTN bindings are are more or less kind of built on a chassis, right? Like the way that the binding is built is, is, is there's no twist to it. Okay. So when you start to edge or you start to make a maneuver where you're going, you know, you're tipping your skis on edge, it's immediate and that throws many, many people off because even on the best 75 millimeter bindings, underfoot cable routing, there's twist to it. And so that can get a lot of people is just like this lack of lateral twist that you might not have even noticed is a thing because you're getting the performance out of your 75 millimeter setup, but it is twisting. You know, some exceptions might be like a Volley Switchback X2 Hardwire. There's a little more lateral stability in those because there's not really the twist of the cable that's happening. So that's something to keep in mind as you are investigating if it feels a little off. Is it just the reactiveness of the binding reacting to your motion that you're not used to? That's that's one thing to consider. But other things that you can modify are spring tension. Like I said, most of these bindings have a, a spring options. Uh, we tend to start people off like on Majo. Majo is a little more, um, you can, I mean, I'm just going to say this because I think it's a good starting point is Outlaw X, Majo, starting someone on like a three in terms of the stiffness, not talking about releasability, that totally separate subject but the stiffness of the preload. So like a three is a good place to start, okay? And in most cases, people coming from older gear want a softer experience, so to speak, a less, a more neutral experience. And so that's what you've got to sort of try to figure out in the gear search. So you kind of line it up with what what we think, you know, when we're helping you, try to get you as close to where you're at now and get you on NTN so you're not forfeiting all the hard work you paid in to learn how to make turns the way you want to make them, and we're not compromising your style. Now, there's all those little modifications that you can do even on the hill, and that's important. I will say this. There are gaps in NTN on the NTN platform in terms of what's available to us out there. So one of the biggest ones is if you're a G3 Targa skier, very neutral binding, not a lot of difference when you change the springs, and then you jump into an Outlaw X, for instance, or a Majo, because that's what you wanted, that's a big jump in terms of equipment. So just keep that in mind, you know, and know what you're getting into 
Um, but hopefully you've got someone like us guiding you through the process so we can kind of ensure that you're in a good place at the beginning. You're not just, Oh, I bought the new thing and now it sucks. Okay. So once you've started kind of figuring out maybe the limitations or not limitations, I don't even like the word limitations because I don't think these bindings limit you per se. Uh, but I do think you need to make the right selection and then you need to know and be informed about how to modify it to your style and to your needs. But after that, go get some reps, get out there and start telemark skiing. That is so important, especially when you've got any sort of new equipment, you got to get reps on it, get comfortable with it. Both from a fun perspective and a safety perspective, you just got to get some reps. You got to know your equipment. You got to be one with your equipment. Know it. Know what's going on. Understand it. Learn, learn the language of what's going on so that you can achieve what's in your head when you're making turns. And just gain... I'm, look, I'm not even the biggest gear head out there. I promise. I have access to a lot of gear, but I grew up skiing whatever the hell was on my feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just got, I got, it's like, okay, here we go. This is the ski boot and binding I got. Okay, cool. I'll figure it out. You know, I, I, I'm cut from that cloth. And I really think that, uh, I'm not saying when you build a relationship with the gear, you got to be super nerdy or whatever, but learn the language of it for yourself so you can kind of understand how you can change it, how you can modify it. And uh, just understand that that personalization factor uh, that goes along with that. Okay, so we got through one, two, and th- uh, one, two, three, and four, and then number five. Basically, I just want you to allow some times for the reps to work, and continue to get to know your equipment. Like I said, I kind of already said this, but obviously, just naturally flowed into number five. Take some time, get to know it, have fun and uh, put your due diligence in at the start of the process. Talk to someone like us that can understand it and understand where you're coming from in terms of equipment and style. And we will do our best to guide you into a zone with this new NTN equipment so that it's not so much you're transitioning or relearning or, you know, it's, it's finding the, it's finding out all those elements to give you the best experience when you go out and do it. And like I said, this is sort of, you got to put some work into it too. And if you're making a huge jump in terms of technology, uh, like the before mentioned, you know, jumping from like a Targa, you never even saw a hammerhead. You never saw an axle or a vice. You never were on an O one or an O two from black diamond. There's, there might be some jumps in there and you know, I'm not going to be the one that tells you that there's a solution to every single thing. I think there's gaps in what's out there right now from a production level binding that's going to fit everything. But it's also hard to say that there's some sort of chart that is going to guide you from one to the other. I've thought about it. (laughs) Maybe it could get done at some point, but I think the best solution at this point is reach out to us, come into the shop, call us, email us, whatever. And hopefully we can guide you through this transition. You're excited about new gear. We want you to be excited about new gear, but we don't want you to have a compromising situation where it just sucks and you got something cool and new because you wanted it and it fit the bill and now you just can't figure it out. So I had a ton of fun talking about this. This is, uh, I hope it's a topic that resonates with you out there. Uh, Whether you're looking to get into NTN, maybe you already got NTN and you just can't quite figure it out. Maybe, maybe this is a good step-by-step process to kind of go back through and sort of identify the different things that can be done to make it awesome for you. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's my hope, my hope and dream for the week. (laughs) So I hope you all have a great time this week out skiing, recreating in the outdoors, enjoying, uh, all of the good stuff, getting some tasty turns 
and uh, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure to sign up for our mailing list. We put out two a week, one in the beginning of the week, one at the end. That's got all our fun content, new stuff, new arrivals, information, and just a way for us to stay in touch with everyone. If you want to connect with me on Instagram, you can find me at Josh No Madsen on Instagram. I'd love uh, to connect with you there. And you can find us at Free Heal Life on the Instagram and the Facebook as well. Join our Facebook group if you're on Facebook. And uh, just hope you have a rad week. Love doing this and I'll be back next Monday. But until then, friends, spread telemark always. See you later.